Hey guys, how are you? So, I'm Steph. In this video, I'm going to transfer my decades of experience. I'm 169 years old. My decades of experience to you. Basic 10 rules. If you follow these steps, you execute on what I'm talking about here. Your life will be much better and the probability that you have a very content life will be much higher. Everything is about probability, of course, in the world. You never know what will happen, but these 10 things that you can do will help a lot. So let's jump into it. Number one, debt is poison. Debt is evil unless you're doing investment debt. Uh, that's a certain level of sophistication in terms of investment debt. Beyond that, credit card debt, high interest debt, student loan debt, these are evil. If you have high interest debt on credit cards, you gotta get rid of those credit card balances as fast as possible. Let's say you have two credit cards, one is you're paying 18%, the other paying 14%, I'm just pulling numbers here. Pay off the 18% as quickly as possible. Why? Because you're paying 4% more interest. It can add up. So one thing you can do is you can do debt consolidation where you find another lender who will lend you a bunch of money at a much lower rate and you basically are able to pay off these high interest debts with the new low interest debt. Whatever you do, if you're in debt, you have to tighten the belt and you have to stop spending on stuff unless it's absolutely needed. Get rid of the debt, debt is poison, it's a weight on you. When you're debt free, it goes a long way to just relaxing you. It's good not only for your psychological health, but your physical health, because you're gonna have a lot less stress. You won't have to worry about paying these debts off. So number one rule, no debt, high interest with debt, high interest debt has to go, and student loan debt, which is evil, pernicious stuff, don't get into student loan debt unless you absolutely have to. Student loan debt is evil because uh, it's non-dischargeable through bankruptcy. You could rack up $100,000 in debt in credit cards and then go, hey, I'm bankrupt, and in nine months, it's all gone, free and clear. Student loan debt, you can't do that. It's, it's a chain around your neck for life. It's evil, student loan debt, evil. So no debt for you. Number two, related to debt, cut out stupid expenses, eating out a lot, uh, buying things you don't need, buying cars you don't have, buying cars you don't have, buying cars that are too expensive, buying a car if you don't need a car. Just get rid of it. No stupid expenses, only buy what you need, especially if you have debt. Especially if you have debt and no savings. Once you have a lot of savings and no debt, then you can start buying stupid things. I'm guilty of that, but I have no debt and lots and lots of investments and savings. So whatever you do, Cut your expenses until you find yourself in a, in a firm financial position. Again, this all leads to freedom, personal freedom, psychological freedom. Number three, if you're watching this, you probably are learning to code. Learning to code to me is a superpower because it is one of the few high paying professions out there where you don't need a certification. You don't need a degree to make big bucks. It's a meritocracy in that skills get you where you're gonna go, skills kills. Uh, it's not something that's protected by organizations. So if you're talented, you can move up even in uh, the so-called FANG companies, the high-end companies. Although you don't need to go work at Google or Apple to make a ton of money. You can do it as a freelancer, as an example. Anyway, learning to code is a superpower. Not only does it give you a super valuable, financially, skill set, it also gives you uh, a more advanced way of thinking. It teaches you how to think logically, how to break down problems. It will create new neural networks for you. New neural network, new neural connections rather, make you smarter. So learning to code is a huge. Number four, once you stabilize yourself as a coder, you gotta start saving a lot. You should be saving at least 20% of your income per year, at least. I know they tell you to 10, 15, no. At least 20%. At my height of savings, I was saving as much as 80%. For every dollar I would make, I would save 80 cents. If you save a lot, you can get way ahead of the game. I talked about this in other videos. It's uh, a basic strategy. You learn to code, as an example, so your salary will probably go whoop, like this. When you go whoop, like this, don't buy fancy cars or bigger houses or start eating at $100, $200 a night meals. What you do is you keep the main low-level lifestyle for a few years, and you start banking and saving all that extra cash. So when a typical person who's doing well 
is able to save 10% a year. After five years, they save 50% of the salary. But if you're saving 30% a year, right? After two years, you've saved 60% of your salary. After three years, you saved 90% of your salary. You see where I'm going with this? So just in a few short years, by just being a little bit frugal at first and saving, within a few years, you're, you're gonna be a decade ahead of somebody else who's just doing the traditional saving. The more savings you have in the bank, the more years of savings you have in the bank, the more you've extracted yourself from the rat race, from the pressure of having to earn a living, et cetera, et cetera. So, Learn to be a super duper demon saver. Next thing you should do is you, you should invest. Now, not in crazy, weird stuff that you don't understand. Best way to invest is in the SMP or some uh, equivalent in your part of the world. Basically, you want to invest in broad markets where you don't have to think about individual companies, et cetera, et cetera. You do what they call dollar cost averaging, where you invest X amount of dollars per month. So let's say, or per quarter, quarter is three months. So let's say you say, I'm gonna invest 5,000 a year. It should be a lot more, but let's say it's 5,000 a year. So you, you divide that 5,000 into three tranches. Let's say you had 2,000, 2,000, and 1,000, you know, over a, a period of six, seven months. Uh, you're never gonna get it at the very top. You're never gonna get it at the cheapest. It's, it's always, it's, it's always, because markets go like this, right? Up and down, up and down, up and down. But generally the trend is up. So we might have a big downturn next month. I don't know, I don't have a crystal ball. But that's why dollar cost average, meaning you invest periodically, discipline, and you look over a 10 year, 20 year period, five year period even, you're gonna be up, way up. Uh, they did a study a long time ago where if you had one person who never put their money in the market and just kept it in the bank versus another person who put their money, all their money invested in the stock market, and then the next day the stock market crashed. The next day. As long as they don't sell the stocks, you just leave it there. The, after 10 years, the person who invested their money and the next day it crashed, after 10 years, they're way ahead of the person who never invested, who just kept it in the bank. So keep that in mind. So you want to invest broad markets. Don't try a stock pick. Don't try to do anything stupid. Just broad market investment. I'll talk more about this in other videos. And you'd be way ahead. Invest saving and investment. So again, it starts with high valued skill. Coding is my suggestion because you don't need degrees and diplomas and university. Uh, number two, uh, you want to save like a maniac. And number three, you want to invest. But you want to do smart investment. Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world, he says just buy the index funds. Index funds. You can go look that up. Number six, we got our finances in order, but maybe this should have been number one. Number six, do daily micro exercises. You gotta keep the body moving. When you move the body, even a little bit, four or five times a day, it's like money in the bank for your body. Let me tell you, because I'm ancient now, your health is more important than wealth. Health is more important than wealth. A thousand times more important. I'd rather be healthy and poor than rich and sick. Let me tell you, when you're sick, you're in pain, you're disabled, uh, all the money in the world is, is crap. So take care of your body. One of the first things you can do, the easy things you can do, is micro exercises several times a day. It could be push-ups, go do five push-ups. Go do five kicks. Uh, go do uh, five crunches, whatever it is. You can go look up micro exercises. But again, you wanna get into the habit of daily and frequent exercises just to get the blood flowing, get everything going. It will make you smarter too. Number seven. When we're talking about the body, you are what you eat, the old, uh, the old uh, adage, right? So this is so true. So what we do know now is that sugar is poison. No sugars. Carbs is basically sugar's cousin. Carbs, no good. So what I would suggest is reduce your carbs by maybe 80, 90%. Some people say 100%. I'll say 80, 90%. But reduce those carbs and whatever you do, no sugars, no... Uh, fruit juices, no Coke and Diet Pepsi. You wanna keep natural foods going into you. Again, I'm not gonna get into the whole thing. There's plenty of videos on it. Some people say carbs are good. So reduce your carbs by quite a bit. Look at the studies. You'd be in much better health. Eat natural foods, avoid processed foods, avoid cr crappy greases. If you're gonna eat any oil, uh, olive oil, cold pressed olive oil. 
Again, there's much more to say about that, but take away this. You want to eat healthy, natural foods and eliminate sugars from your diet. Sugar feeds cancer. You know, carbs become sugars. So I suggest try to reduce your carbs by 80, 90 percent. Try to introduce healthier foods. It makes a big difference. Number eight, how do you know if you at a healthy weight? Everybody knows if you're bigger, the chances of getting all kinds of diseases increases. Ooh, a lot more pain, a lot more pain. So you don't want to be in pain. So what you got to do is get your weight down. How do you know if you're a good weight? Body fat percentage. You can look it up. Healthy body fat percentage for men. Healthy body fat percentage for women. For men, it's 10 to 18 percent, something like that. For women, it's a little higher, 20 to 21 to 25 or 30, something like that. You can go look it up. But what I would say, instead of looking at the scale, scale helps. If you're 400 pounds, it's a good in, versus 200 pounds, it's a good indicator that you're healthier. 200 pounds. Again, it's not about fat shaming. It's not about anything. It's about your health. You want to be healthy, happy, have a, um, have a, a, sh a sharper intellect. When you have le your body's putting less energy trying to maintain a bulk, it has more energy to put into thinking. And less stress on the body, less stress overall. If you're, if you're severely overweight or overweight, you're putting stress on your body. I can tell you, I've been there. After I got sick, I was put on ma massive amounts of prednisone. I went up to 250 pounds. I was quite a bit heavier, let me tell you. It's 60 pounds heavier than where I was, 55, 60 pounds heavier than where I am now. I'm 6'2". And when I'm telling you, when I was even 20 pounds heavier than I am now, I feel much more pressure on my body, let alone when I was 250. Yeah, so uh, look at the body fat percentage, healthy body fat percentage is what I'd be shooting at. Again, all this, I'm not a medical doctor. I don't know your health situation. You gotta go consult your medical doctor, make sure everything's cool. But you get the principle, right? You get the principle. Here's a simple one. Number nine, drink water. Yeah, look it up. Look at your body, uh, your height, your weight, and look how much water you should be drinking. Water flushes the system. It cleans it out. So yeah, drink water. It's a simple thing to do, not very demanding. Uh, yeah, water, not Diet Pepsi or fruit juice, water. And tip number 10, cut toxic people out of your life. Do you need people who put you down around you? No, you don't. Do you need people who are just tire you out? No, you don't. Cut them out. Toxic people, psychic vampires, these type of people should be cut out of your life. Trust me, your life will be a lot easier, a lot less stress if you cut these people out of your life. You have to decide when that makes sense for you, but it's a, it's a good plan. You get them out of your life, uh, you re reduce stress by that much, and as you know, and everybody knows now, stress causes all kinds of problems for you. It could cause heart attacks, cause all kinds of problems. So you don't want stress, and toxic people will cause a lot of stress. So there you go, a little outside of the purview of this channel, is purview the right word? Typical subject, but again, I'm just transferring what I've learned over the last uh, many, well, several decades now of my life to help you follow these 10 rules here and you'll see your quality of life will improve quite a bit.